We're back. Horse Racing Nation headquarters, HRN HQ, post Preakness, Ed DeRosa, Sarah Albadwi. Sarah, not quite the surprise we saw Derby with the Preakness result, but very mild upset, I suppose, and that the favorite didn't win. I mean, how could you replicate the surprise that we saw for the Kentucky Derby? You couldn't. couldn't. There wasn't even a horse <laughs> no. at 80 to 1 on the board. It wasn't a horse at 20 to 1. That yeah. was maybe the big surprise of the Preakness. The biggest surprise was who the longest shot on the board was, yes. I would think. But early voting, getting the job done, with the way that we saw the track playing, kind of favoring more inside speed, early voting just made a lot of sense, <laughs> got the job done. Epicenter, a little further back than we may have expected, I would agree. With yeah, you which that. I think ended up being circumstantial based on what I thought was a fantastic view. Kudos to Joel Rosario to agreeing to do it. Jockey Cam for doing it. Uh, and we're going to take a look at that video as we talk about it. But I really wasn't sold. I remember at the time of the race, uh, someone I was with, like, oh, Epicenter didn't break that great. And then he kind of talked down the rail. And we're like, eh, I don't know about those tactics. As it turns out, as we see in this video with the Jockey Cam, he got beat to a spot. There was clearly a goal of being... Uh, I don't want to say what well, it would have been wide, but, you know, they had an idea of being off the rail a little bit, kind of in that second tier. And he didn't get to that spot in time and then ended up going to the rail. And that made all the difference, I think. I would agree. It seems like they had to immediately go to plan B within just a matter of seconds of getting out of the gate, having to switch tactics, decide to go inside and save ground, ended up rallying for second, second once again. <laughs> And it was a good second, I thought. I mean, creative minister to me at one point looked like he was going to put in a bid early voting, kind of put put him away, or I shouldn't say put him away. They were never neck and neck, but put enough distance on him. And I was like, okay, that's not happening. For Epicenter to rally and even look like he might be a threat late, I thought showed that he ran well. But Jose Ortiz leaving no doubt, you mentioned this when we – did the first take and now we're on take two but uh jose slammed the door shut late with sort of drifting in toward the rail but epicenter was never getting to him right and jose while doing so still very well clear but making yes. sure that there was no doubt about the fact that epicenter was not going to get that rail run to catch him late like rich strike did to him in the derby obviously never going to get there anyway though no uh so another second for epicenter Early voting gets the nod. Neither going to the Belmont Stakes. At this point, who's your leading three-year-old male? Well, when we talked about this a little bit yesterday, I would say Epicenter, but I think still the public might be on Rich Strike, especially since we are seeing him now return in the Belmont Stakes. A win there, he's your top three-year-old. Without a doubt, maybe even clinch, uh, unless someone were to go on and beat Older males, the three-year-old championship with a win. I actually think he's going to be favored in the Belmont Stakes. Well, considering how the rest of the field is shaping up for right now, uh, I don't know who else would be. <laughs> we kind of talked about this a little bit yesterday, and that Mo Donegal might be taking some money. Perhaps we'll see somebody else join the fray as the field kind of takes shape leading up to the Belmont Stakes. But deserving favoritism, I think, would go to Rich Strike with Epicenter not contesting the third and final leg of the Triple Crown. Right. Deserving I don't think he's the most likely winner, so maybe in that sense, that's not the right word, but certainly most accomplished. He's the Derby winner. Mo Donegal probably will take some money, especially since early voting won the Preakness. But, I mean, the reality to me is Rich Strike ran the better Derby. Yes, he had the better run on the rail, but he accelerated when Sonny needed him to, and it, it takes a horse to make those kind of moves and be that nimble Mo Donegal ended up having to go way wide. And, you know, to me, in that regard, Rich Strike, I get why he's going to be favored. But as a better, I'm looking forward to playing against him. Me too. And one of the interesting players that may be coming into the Belmont Stakes may be a good opportunity to bet against. Maybe not my top pick, but Ness to join <laughs> oh, the fray right. as a potential horse to contest the field, having finished second to Secret Oath in the Kentucky Oaks. What do we think of her chances? It's not contest the field. No. That's one of the worst ones that you've made, I will say. Some of them are funny. Uh, that was a little... I don't think she's impossible. Unfortunately, you know, pletcher has been here before with the Philly, so I think that probably is going to take money. I don't know that she's someone I can foresee being excited to bet about, bet, but she did 
losing the oak, some might say no excuse and maybe we'll get a price. I, it's hard for me to think she's impossible based on what we saw in the Ashland, especially. And obviously this is a much different animal, mile and a half against males. But I mean, I'm thinking off the top of my head, I'd rather bet her at 10 to one than Rich Strike at three. That's fair enough. And I wonder what kind of discussion we would be having if Secret Oath had won the Preakness and Nest having finished second to her coming back. That's true. Belmont. That would uh, be a very different discussion, I feel. But she didn't. Right. So, so it's this Fancy discussion. Women. You know what we really need, though, is a horse named like our video and subscribe to our channel because then we would remember to tell people to do that earlier. We really should. But get if, on, that. on the flip side, if you're still with us, there's every reason to like this video because you're still watching for a reason and to subscribe because we have lots of great video content, not only done by us, but also all the members of the HRN family. So like, subscribe, join us again throughout the build up to the Belmont Stakes. We'll have plenty more content coming out as the field takes shape. We have some content coming out on Lone Star yes. as well for a very exciting Memorial Day over there in Texas. So make sure to stay tuned for that. All right. Well, that's it for here. Plenty more discussion on not only Belmont Stakes, but Belmont Stakes Day as we're 18 days away and plenty of stuff in between. Happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day.